Star Wars Battlefront. I am a massive fan of Star Wars Battlefront 2. I still have it on my computer. And it's 2015, and it looks terrible compared to everything else I own. And yet, I'd rather play it than most other things I own, because it's one of the most fun things I've ever played in my entire life. It's caused a lot of arguments, but I'm gonna go on the side of I think that this new Star Wars Battlefront might just do it again. I have never seen a developer nail the tone of the films in the way DICE has, including the ones that were based directly on the films themselves. Yes, there's no space battles, but there weren't any space battles in the first Battlefront either. You do realize there's going to be another Battlefront 2. This is a reboot. Do you honestly think that there's not going to be space battles eventually? Honestly, I'll be shocked if it's not a Just Cause 3. So yeah, people generally look at Just Cause as a sandbox game. And that's usually the context that people talk about it. But it's not like a sandbox game like Minecraft. It's a sandbox game like, I want to blow this up and I want to jump over that and then blow it up. Action. Just Cause 3 looks like one of the most insane action sandbox experiments of all time. The sheer amount of things that you're going to be allowed to do in Just Cause 3 are gonna make it feel like you're in the middle of the creation of a ridiculous action film. And when I say ridiculous, if you've ever played any of the other two Just Cause games, you know what I mean. Just Cause is the definition of go big or go home. Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Now the thing about Metal Gear Solid is that you can play it however you want. If you don't want to play this as an action game, you're perfectly welcome. But it's also a huge waste of time if you only play it a certain way. In my opinion, part of the strength of Metal Gear Solid is its replayability. Every single mainline Metal Gear Solid game I have played, and I have played it in different ways. It's sometimes super weird, but it's always fun. The action version of Metal Gear Solid is always a huge roller coaster as well. If you take that path through Metal Gear, you are more than in for a Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, in my opinion, Tomb Raider is part of a symbiotic relationship with Uncharted. The original Tomb Raider series started off and really kind of built that whole genre. Then Uncharted came along and built upon that. And if you ask me, the reboot of Tomb Raider builds upon Uncharted. The sequel to this game, Rise of the Tomb Raider, is going to be such a big deal for action fans because it is going to build upon a game that essentially was the pinnacle, in my opinion, of its genre. The set pieces, which drove the action element of the game, make me say there's no way Rise of the Tomb Raider is isn't going to be one of the top games of this year. talk about action without talking about Batman if there's a Batman entry. And although the PC version didn't turn out quite as good as we all wanted it to, the console version of Batman Arkham Knight is perhaps the pinnacle of the action game. Such a beautiful game. You see the rain on Batman on the road. You see every detail in every rock. You see all the explosions. You see every bone crushing hit in a way that just makes you feel like you're there. Even though you know that nothing in real life is anything like this. Or Mad Max. I can't imagine a scenario where a game based on the most artfully action-packed movie in 10 years, if handled properly, isn't one of the best games of the year. And from what we've heard, it really seems to truly be that. It's an open world game, but it seems a lot like it narrows its focus very quickly, depending on what you get yourself into. And if you remember the movie, the current iteration of Mad Max is essentially an avalanche. And they've done a lot of work incorporating that feeling into the video game, at least from what I've seen, and it looks fantastic. Fallout 4 is probably the biggest name game of the year. When Bethesda rears its head with one of its massive open world RPGs, everyone stops and listens. Now even Bethesda themselves are quick to admit that the action components in previous fallouts have sometimes been a little bit on the wonky side. But anybody who watched their E3 presentation knows that that's not going to be an issue with Fallout 4. They showed off a very impressive demo of the combat systems that are in place. They listened, they learned, and it looks like they got it right. A Fallout game where the action component is as strong as all the other components I mean, really, what more could you ask for? Any Fallout game is like a lot of other games in one. And that should tell you how diverse the gameplay in Bethesda games, especially Fallout, actually are. And how utterly destroyed all of our social lives are going to be when Fallout 4 comes out.
Witcher 3, like Metal Gear Solid, The Witcher can really be played quite a few different ways. But unlike Metal Gear Solid, there is no way to avoid combat in this game entirely. And what a joy the combat is. The action in The Witcher 3 is probably the most natural flowing action I've played in any game of that kind in quite a while. It's been a while since I've had one of those games where I move around a lot while I'm playing it. But The Witcher 3 really gets me dodging and lunging and whatever it looks like when I think I'm doing those things on a couch. And what I really like about it is it just keeps going and going and going and getting more and more complex. The Witcher 3 is a fantastic game, and if you haven't played it or don't want to play it, what's wrong with Dying Light. Dying Light was actually something I was not that excited about and turns out is great. Who knew that a zombie game that played like Mirror's Edge a little bit could really be as fun and interesting as Dying Light is? The amount of forward momentum you constantly have in this game is insane, and you never get that feeling of being safe or wanting to stand still, especially once the light starts to die. Pun intended. There's also a massive DLC that's coming out fairly soon that supposedly is going to be a massive game changer. Born is an extremely brutal action game with a high difficulty level, a sharp learning curve, and a powerful way of doling out their narrative using lore as opposed to direct storytelling. This minimalist approach allows for something that a lot of games actually don't do nowadays, which is ask you to specifically enjoy the game, a huge budget AAA game from the gameplay. Which sounds maybe not that revolutionary, but if you think about it, a very large amount of games nowadays are about set pieces and effects and multiplayer. Speaking of which, Bloodborne does have multiplayer, but takes the more journey-esque route, which in such a violent game is an incredibly cool thing to do. Bloodborne is not just an action-packed title that will hold your attention for a very long time. It's also an extremely unique game from a seasoned developer that really knows their shit. I won't follow that up with a pun. If you've played any of these games, do us a favor, leave us a comment, tell us exactly what you thought about it. If we missed any, of course, share them with us as well. The goal is really just to celebrate a great genre. While you're at it, click the like button as well as subscribe to Game Ranks. Come back here daily for new videos. We thank you very much for watching this one. We will see you next time.